In this video, we're going to cover some stoichiometry problems. So let's get started. So if you have an equation written 2a plus 5b yields 3c plus 4d, where a, b, c, and d are random compounds, and if you have 0.34 moles of A are mixed with 1.17 moles of B at an elevated temperature. After 0.06 moles of A are left, how much B is left? So there's a lot going on here. And the first thing you need to do is determine the limiting reactant. So if we know, if we have 0.34 moles of A, we want to ask ourselves, how much of a specific product will that make? And we can really compare it to any product, whether it be C or D. But for simplicity, let's compare it to D, since D only has one mole. So if we have two moles of A makes one mole of D, then 0.34 moles of A would make half of that, which is 0 0.17 moles of D. Now for B, we have 1.17 moles of B. If that's the case, and we know that five moles of B react with one mole or react to produce one mole of D, it would be one fifth of B that D will be created. So we would divide this by five. So once we do 1.17 divided by five, we get 0 0.234 moles of D. And we know from limiting reactant, which everyone create, whichever reactant is responsible for producing the least amount of product, which is in this case A, and only making 0.17 moles of D, this one is the limiting reactant. So we know this will run out first. So now it's good to know. Now, if the question is asking after 0.06 moles of A are left, how much B is left? So to figure out how much was used out of A, all we can do is take our initial value of A and subtract the amount that is left after the reaction, which is 0.06. And then this makes 0.28 moles of A. So we want to figure out how many moles of B are left after this amount of this amount of A reacts. So we can basically do the same kind of ratios, but just go backwards. So um, we would go forwards and then go backwards. So here's what I mean. If we have our 0.28 moles of A that we know is going to react because out of the 0.34 moles of A that we have, our question is asking for how much reacts after or if only 0.06 are left. So that means 0.28 would have to react. This would produce how much of D? That's our question now. So since we know that 2A makes four or makes one D, then we would just divide it by two and we get 0.14 of D. So now we can use that amount of D. We know that's going to be created. That is, this is the amount of D created if you only have, if after the reaction 0.06 moles of A are left. That's important. So now we can use this number to go backwards and figure out how much B that requires. So what we can do is based on the ratio, we know that if we go backwards in the equation, one mole of D is responsible for reacting five moles of A. So if we multiply this 0.14 by five, 0.14 times five, we get 0 0.70 moles of B. So this is not our answer. This is the amount of B that was reacted. The question is asking for how much is left. So what we'd have to do is just like we did for A, we'd have to subtract the amount reacted with the amount that we started out with to figure out how much is left. So we can do that over here. 1.17 of B minus 0 0.7 of B equals 0 0.47. So you'd have 0 0.47 moles of B that is remaining after this reaction occurs, after 0 0.06 moles of A are left. So let's do another one. So this one's with actual compounds. We can calculate the mass of O2 consumed in the complete combustion of 45.9 grams sample of C4H8O. So once you are given combustion, combustion is a very key word in chemistry, we want to write a combustion equation. So we can do that by taking our organic sample. In this case, what basically what that means is whatever has the C's and H's and O's. So it would be C4H8O. And we react it with O2 to produce H2O plus CO2. That's always characteristic of a combustion equation. 
So now we need to balance it. So we have C4, we can put a four over here. I'll change the color, put four. Then we have H8, so we can put a four in front of here. And now we need to balance the oxygen, which is the most difficult part for combustion. So on the right side, we can see we have four oxygens plus another eight oxygens, that's 12. And on the right, we have one over here and two over here. So the way I like to think about this is because you have oxygen from two different sources on the left-hand side, what you can do is basically cancel out the one oxygen that's with the organic compound with one of the ones on the right. So this would now become 11. The reason why we do that is because we know that this coefficient in front of the C4H8O or whatever organic compound you have has to be one. If you change this coefficient, it messes up the equation for everything else. So this has to be one. So if this is one, we need to change this O2 coefficient to make it equal the 11 remaining oxygens on the right side after you cancel out the one, one of them on the right with one of them on the left, the one that you can't balance because you can't change the coefficient for this one. So now our job is a little bit easier. We need to balance out 11 and we only have two. So what we can do, which is characteristic of a lot of combustions, is write a fraction as the coefficient for oxygen. So we can simply write this fraction as 11 over 2. And once we do that and we multiply the entire equation by 2, which doesn't change any of the balancing, we can get 11 as the coefficient for oxygen. So now we would write the complete balance equation. So we'd have 2C4H8O plus 11 O2 yields 8 H2O plus 8 CO2. Okay, so that's balanced. Now that we have our balance equation, we want to see how much O2 is consumed if we combust 45.9 grams of C4H8O. And if you're thinking, find the moles, that's exactly right. So we want to take 45.9 and divide it by the molar mass of C4H8O, which is 48, meaning four times 12 for the carbons, plus eight for the hydrogens, <clears throat> plus 16 for oxygen. Let me calculate that real quick. And you get 72. So you have 45.9 divided by 72 equals 0 0.6375 moles. <clears throat> so that is the amount of moles of organic C4H8O that was combusted. Now we need to see how many moles of O2 does that correspond to. Now we know from our complete balance equation that if we have two moles, it corresponds to 11. So the ratio is of O2 to C4H8O is 11 over two. So if we multiply our C4H8O, which is our 0.6375, by 11 over two, by the ratio of O2 to C4H8O, the C4H8H8O moles cancel out and we end up with moles of O2. So doing that math, we would get 3.506, and so we can write 3.51 for sig figs. So we'd have 3.51 moles. Now the, the question is asking for how much grams. So we can multiply our moles by the molar mass of O2, which is 32. And we get 112.2 or simply 112 grams of O2. So that's how you do that one. If you have any questions, please comment below.